Alright, so someone the other day asked in the comments what my sort of Garmin Wahoo situation is, as well as power meter and maybe heart rate monitors. So I thought I'd go through it because there's quite a lot to talk about and I have some options that may not be quite that normal. So first of all, we'll just go for the computer, which is the Wahoo Element Bolt. Now the Wahoo Element Bolt, the main reason is just because I lost my Garmin ages ago, bought it, did the job, had a Brighton, but the software was terrible and, you know, it's really easy on the phone just to add routes as well as change the display. It records power, it does everything I need to do. The only downside is it doesn't do the Garmin IQ thing, so you can't add like uh, error sensors and stuff like that. But that, you know, that's pretty marginal. Except for that, really rate it, good stuff. I mean, I've had three, they always break, but they give you a new one, so I think that's okay. Like, it's obviously not great for longevity, but mine always break, but they give me another one, so fair enough. Now, for power meters, this is a more of a rogue one. So I start off with stages, which is like classic cheap power meter, and then. <clears throat> After bringing my leg and all the rest of the stuff that happened in like 2019, uh, I decided it was probably a good idea to get a dual-sided one. I was looking at it anyway, like because I thought the stages might not be too accurate. And what I settled on was a power uh, was an info crank. Now, info cranks are normally very expensive, like a grand new. I managed to get one on a Black Friday sale for like 500 quid, so it was, it was decent uh, for a crank set and chain rings. Uh, the reason it was so cheap was because it was a 5339, like 130 BCD, so you can only use big chain rings, but that's fine. Um, we just have to grow up. But anyway. The reason why the InfoCrank is actually so good is because it fits a 24mm Shimano spindle, right? So it fits the same as all the Shimano ones, which is perfect because my bike generally have BB86, so it means the bottom bracket is very easy to interplay. So that's number one reason. Number two reason is that it's actually accurate. Now, a lot of people cast aspersions about power meters, but just watch Shane Miller's videos and you'll know straight away that the Shimano power meters just don't work. Uh, it's quite simple. The left side is fine, but obviously left side only, which is, you know, it's good enough. Like, to be honest, you can't really complain too much, but I feel like... You know, if you're properly into it, like you might as well get a dual sided. And the right hand Shimano power meters don't work. They didn't work on the last gen. They didn't work on this gen. And so you, if you have one of those, there's no point having a power meter. Like honestly, just zero point. Like just buy a left hand only and just deal with it. Um, pedals, fine. But again, pedals I don't like because I eat through pedals like no tomorrow. I don't know if it's my weird pedaling style or whatever, but I always ruin them. Plus you clip them. And I just don't think they're the best solution um, because they're quite exposed. And then other options are quarks, rotors, they're all good, but it's just a ball eight with a power meters, well, they cost a lot of money as well. So the info crank is good. It's super accurate, it's plus or minus one percent. It's designed to be a power meter, so it's generally seen as pretty good. Very so I can use it, so it must be okay. And generally people reckon it's good. They brought a new one out recently, uh, which apparently is better, but I haven't used it um, and whatever. So yeah, I think it's pretty good. It's only got some downsides though. Now the biggest downside is that it's AMP plus only. A uh, bit annoying. I think the new one might be Bluetooth, but my one is AMP plus only, which is a bit annoying if you're trying to do Zwift or anything. Uh, weird batteries, LR44s, so a bit of a ball eight. You can't find the petrol station always if you ever run out on a ride. But because it's dual sided, it's generally okay because if one side does run out, um, then you can use the other one, it'll just double it. And also it gives you quite a lot of warning. Um, the other issue is just like, you used to have to use a magnet as well, but I think that's generally gone over. It's just a bit of a ball ache to, to set up. And the biggest issue is that you need to install it with a proper torque wrench. Um, you've got to whack it up to 45 newton meters. So you need like a car torque wrench because otherwise you won't do it properly and the crank will fly off. And I've had that many times and I had to get, well, they gave me a new one luckily, which is very nice, but it was definitely a user error for myself. Um, but yeah, I really rate it. Um, it's really easy to use like once you get it up. And the biggest thing is you never have to calibrate it as well. So I would highly recommend. The other downside is that it's very heavy. That is probably its biggest issue is it is super heavy uh, compared to a Shimano crank because it's like solid and all the rest of it. But you know, unless you're a massive weight weenie, it's probably not the biggest issue. It's annoying for my one I'm trying to get super like hill climb build, but otherwise not too bad. And also with people with like nine kilo aero bikes now, no one seems to care about weight. You know, like a Trek Madonna at the Tour de France for Stoyman's weighing 8.6 kilos. So I doubt 200 grams on the power meter weighs much. Right, I'm going to get my last little thing, which is heart rate monitor, which is the old McGean. Now, the McGean is good, but it's terrible. As all heart rate monitors, maybe it's just me, but it seems like a lot of people have this issue where power meters, so heart rate monitors just don't work. Now, it's a bit annoying that they don't work because they seem such a simple piece of kit, but they just don't. So I've been through a couple, um, so I wouldn't really recommend it, but I don't know which, which to recommend. They're 20 quid, they last a year. It's fine, it's not great. I don't know who is the best. Apparently, Wahoo are good because they just keep giving you new ones even when they break. Um, apparently, Polar is the other one, but you have to take the like strap or the like unit off the strap, which is fair enough. Um, but yeah, heart rate monitors, if you've got any recommendations, definitely let me know because I still have not really decided. I don't have a heart rate monitor at the moment. I should get one. It's useful for the training and all the rest of it. But yeah, those are the sort of things I use to analyze all my data. Um, for then, for like afterwards, training peaks, Strava, 
Um, and yeah, that's about it. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.